All right, I'm here because uh, we're rolling into final exams, and I'm definitely feeling the pain of final exam season. And I'm feeling I'm, I'm recording this video for my own students because uh, you guys just finished exam number four, and now we have our final in five days. And the final is comprehensive, and I am recording this video because I don't get to see you before the um, final. And there are some things that you should know. And among those things that you should know, uh, there's, there's some little gifts, there are some reminders, and then there's a bunch of strategies that I have to help you uh, on the final. And I'm posting it to YouTube because that's where I post everything. It's easier. And so hopefully some of my YouTube doggies out there will benefit from this little pep talk as well. All right, so the first thing that you should know, um, I, I get lots of questions about this, so I'm sure there are some of you who are still wondering how this works. In this class, your written exams have been worth 35% of your total grade. Your practical exams have been worth 35% of your total grade. We've had four of them. If you don't remember that, then um, I think that you might have more problems than just the upcoming final exam. But I'm sure you remember every single one of those fabulous exams, particularly the Tuesday, Thursday night practical number three with the power outage. I mean, that was kind of epic and glorious. So here we are. You have five total exams that are going to make up that 35 percent. This is why you care about listening to this lecture. First of all, all of those exams are worth a chunk of change. Your final, your score on your final, so let's just say you get an 80 percent. I'm going to take that 80 percent. I'm going to look at every single one of your written grades, and let's say written number two was a 60. And let's just say that that's the lowest written of all of your practicals. Guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to go in there. I'm going to say, wow, that's a good grade right there. Let's cross that one out. The comprehensive final covers everything. If you learned it by the end, I'm cool with that. I'm going to give you an 80 percent. You're going to get, your, your grade is going to increase more than you would expect just from one more exam. Same thing with the practical. Um, if I would imagine maybe practical number three was your low, those cadavers in the dark were a little scary, and you rock this final with a whopping 90 percent, of course you are, then I'm going to take that 90 percent and I'm going to make that 60 percent a 90 percent, and that's a good thing for your grade. So you're motivated. I've had students jump an entire letter, like from a C to a B, which is like, really, that's, that's incredibly generous. That's incredibly awesome. Like you, you learned the material because, yes, it is comprehensive. And if you feel like, oh, this is going to be an easy test, then um, you haven't been conscious either because, you know, your comprehensive final exam list, required structure list is, is long. There's like, what, 560 structures on here. And these are all fair game on the practical and the written. I'm not going to ask you 560 questions. I'm going to ask you three or four from each lab. And so you need some strategies because otherwise you're going to read through this list and maybe you'll read through this list and be like, wow, I know a lot and rock on, then you're going to do really well. Most of us will read through this list and go, oh, I think I know that and I sort of remember that and, oh, I totally know that one. But probably not all of them are going to be, um, you're not going to feel like a rock star with all of them. That's cool. What I want you to um, think about are some strategies. When you are faced with 560 terms, please, I beg of you, do not just start with the A's and move your way down the list one at a time and, like, think, okay, do I know the abdominal cavity? Do I know the abdominal pelvic cavity? Do I know what abduction is? No. Go through the list all the way down and highlight the ones where you're like, boom, I don't even have to study that. I already know it. Highlight them in a color and 
look into my eyeballs, get rid of them. Never look at them again. You're done. Those are done. Go through the list and, like, highlight in a different color the ones that you're like, I don't, I've never heard this word before in my life. I have no idea, even when I go back and look at the lab, I have no idea what this is. I couldn't remember it the first time. I have, I've got nothing. I've got nothing to attach this concept to. Cross it off your list. Cross it off. Like, make it go away. Don't spend any more moments on structures that you literally got nothing. And then you're going to be left with things that you can actually fit into your brain. Like, you'll be left with things that you can say, oh, I can remember that. I can, I can do a little extra studying, a little beefing up in this area, and actually remember that. I also, so, so you just totally went through and prioritized how you're going to spend your time. Because if you start from 1 to 0, I mean 1 to 560, and try to relearn all of them with equal amounts of time, you're going to totally burn out, and it's not going to be the most efficient. I mean, you got five days to get this stuff just solid and working. There's something else I was going to tell you, and then I got distracted. Um, put them together. So as you're going through them and you're like, okay, this is one that I can do, these are in alphabetical order. And you don't want to study them in alphabetical order. You want to study them by content topic. So sort them. Make new flashcards. Find the flashcards you've already made. Put them into piles. Like sort them out so that you've got your stack that you're going to actually practice. All right. You want to come in and mess with the specimens. So open lab, we have, I don't know, I think every single day of the week until I, can, I can't remember, and I'm not going to say it here, but you know you can go into Canvas and you can look at the announcements because I posted all the open lab times there. So please um, do that and holler at me if you have questions about open lab times. And then I have a present for you. I have a present for you because I love you. Dun, 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 dun. Uh huh. I thought that it might be helpful because I just talked about the written portion of the final, and I also um, want you to kind of have a visual for possible, what a written final exam could possibly look, look like. On the written portion, I'm looking for bigger themes. I'm looking for um, connecting topics. Um, you know that there's going to be all sorts of pathway fun times on the um, final exam that can bring across a whole bunch of different topics. That's kind of exciting to me. And I have a sample written exam that I am going to post in Canvas so that you can have this thing. Now, I'm writing a whole new exam. You take written, you take example exams from rigs with a grain of salt because it's an example exam because I am not reusing it, so chances are excellent that none of these questions are going to be in there. Chances are also excellent that some of the questions got the boot. In other words, they're weirdly written or whatever. And no, I will not offer a key with the practice exam. You can look it up, dogs. There's something I wanted to show you down here. Oh, and you know it's not going to fit up here. So look at this. Okay. I want you to look at these short answer questions because um, before I started talking to my students about how to strategize for these kinds of short answer questions, um, I found that they did, my students did horrible on these things because they're like, why is it important to study anatomy? Oh, I can just say it's fun to study anatomy because it's cool and Riggs thinks we should study it. And that's not a very meaningful answer. And so you want to make sure that you actually, these are not like survey questions. These are not like I'm trying to make my class better and so I'm asking you something. These are actual, like, you need to apply your knowledge of anatomy and the universe to answering these questions in a meaningful way. So I just kind of wanted to give you the heads up. Here are some that you can totally look at and start kind of thinking about. They may or may not or probably won't be on the final, but there might be questions like that. 
I think that's all I want to tell you. Um, I'm going to post this written sample in the final exam module in Canvas, which is where I just was. Look, final exam module. Look, it says final exam information. I don't think that's updated, so take that with a grain of salt. Your quiz, your last quiz, don't forget to do it. Be honest, and it's anonymous, so you can say whatever you would like. And here's the review, and I'll post it under resources, the practice final. Okay, seriously, I'm going to bed. Bye-bye.